So, this is a question we hear a lot. If evolution says that humans descended from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? The argument goes like this. You've seen this pic, right? It clearly shows that monkeys evolved into humans. So if we won in this survival of the fittest battle, then how come I can go to the zoo and see monkeys? Um, yeah. Okay. The problem is that this famous image tells you as much about evolution as Transformers does about robotics. I want to knock this argument down blow by blow. First up, evolution. Evolution is the way that life forms change, and that change is slow. It happens over generations and generations. Also, that change, that evolution, happens to populations, not individuals. It's generations of populations that evolve. Second up, natural selection. Natural selection is a scientific explanation for how we think those life forms have changed. In a nutshell, life is hard. In a slightly bigger nutshell, within a population you get variation. Think about a population of finches. Some of them are going to have fatter beaks, some of them are going to have pointy beaks, whatever. Now say those birds spread out onto other islands. On one of the islands, life is hard because the available food is lovely wormy things inside a tree. The birds with the pointy beaks can get at them more, they eat more, they get stronger, they breed more, and that genetically determined beak shape becomes more common in the next generation. On another island, there might be nuts with a, with a thick shell. So it's birds with a bigger beak that can crack them open, get the food, eat it, get stronger, breed more, and that genetically determined beak shape gets more common in the next generation. In each niche, one type of beak is more suitable and gets naturally selected for. So what you've got is populations changing through the generations evolving, driven by the process of natural selection. So back to the question of if evolution exists, why are there still monkeys? First things first, and I will come back to this later, never you fear, but the word monkey isn't very useful when talking about all this sort of stuff, so I'm going to use chimpanzee for now. And this picture makes it look like evolution is linear, that one species evolves into another, evolves into another, evolves into another. This is not what happened with humans and chimps. Instead, humans and chimps became different species in another way. Sometime in the past, before there were humans or chimps, there was another species, let's call it Species X. Now, we don't know exactly what that last common ancestor species was or when it lived. Estimates vary between 6 and 12 million years ago. But at some point, that species split into two, and each one followed its own evolutionary path. One of them led to Homo sapiens, that's us, and the other one led to the Pantroglodytes, the common chimpanzee. We say Species X was the last common ancestor of chimps and humans. So actually, it's Species X that isn't around anymore, whereas chimps and humans still are. This makes chimps more like our evolutionary cousins than our evolutionary grandparents. We didn't descend from them, both of us descended from Species X. This is an example of how species evolve by branching, and it's what causes the incredible biodiversity, that amazing range of life forms that we have on our planet today. So there you have it. That's why humans and chimps are both still around. Oh, and before I go, I should probably explain the monkeys thing too. There's a really good fact in this as well. So we can extend the tree out to include the rest of the apes and the primates too. The primates are a much bigger group. They've got the apes and also the lemurs, the monkeys, etc. And the primates are one single biological group because they evolved from one single common ancestor. The monkeys aren't one single biological group. You've got the old world monkeys and you've got the new world monkeys. Grouping them together from an evolutionary point of view would be like putting the gorillas and the orangutans together in their own special group and calling them Gorangutans? And here's that cool fact that I promised. The common ancestor of primates split off into the wet-nosed primates, which includes lemurs, and the dry-nosed primates, which includes monkeys and apes. Somewhere along this branch, the dry-nosed primates, which now include us, lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C, which is why we need vitamin C in our diets, otherwise we'll get scurvy. The wet-nosed primates never lost that ability, so they don't need vitamin C in their diet. It's why you'll never see a lemur with scurvy. So there you go. That's the heads up on evolution, natural selection, our links to chimps and monkeys, and why I think it's totally fine for you to go to the zoo and nick the oranges off the lemurs. You need them more. <laughs> see you soon.